This is so good to be here with you today at Slush. Because this is the kind of energy, this is the kind of innovative potential that Europe needs. This is what we are thriving on. Because the thing is that we have a long list of problems, but we need people who see the problems, realize our challenges, but are creative, positive in also constructing our solutions. And what better startup idea than to create the slush uh, events in the middle of the Finnish winter? I, I call that ambition, and how that ambition has thrived. Because uh, things have changed over this decade where slush has existed. And this is not because technology has developed. This is just as much because the way it fits into our lives has transformed. Technology is not longer an add-on. It is in everything. In those 10 years, technology has changed from being part of our lives to affecting everything we do. In these 10 years, from just 140 million phones being sold, it has increased tenfold. Now 1.5 billion smartphones being sold around the world. And those devices, they come in completely integral part of our lives. When we look at the television, when we look at things, when we're streaming, when we get in touch with friends, when we're looking for a restaurant, when we un unlock the car or set the thermostat back home. And that, of course, is just the visible surface. Because underneath, digital technology changes everything. The way we regulate waste in our economy, the way we are enabled to use uh, energy in a more efficient ways, the way we run the wind turbines to make it all happen, how we deliver medical care, well, how we do farming. You find digital technology everywhere you look. And digital technology is changing our democracy as well, creating new ways to take part, but of course, unfortunately, also new ways to manipulate us, to persuade us to things that we may not really realize that we want to do. Of course, you know this better than anyone else. Because this is your life, this is your decades, this is where you're coming from. So the thing is, of course, for someone like me to figure out, well, what are then the consequences when digital technologies is a completely integral part of our lives? And as I see it, sort of this idea that there is a cyberspace, that has ended. There's not, no such thing as a separate world for technology, where there is one set of rules and then another set of rules in the real world. Because what goes on online doesn't stay online. On the contrary, this affects everything we do, the way we work, the way our democracy works. And the thing is that the more we realize the more concerned we become. Is this really working for us? Is technology really there for us as humans on our planet, as citizens in our society, as consumers in the marketplace? Is it really there for us? Because what a number of people have seen over the last couple of years is that businesses do not really live up to the promise that their data is not being hacked or being misused or being visible for someone that you really don't want to see your data. And they have seen powerful companies, amazingly successful companies, closing out competitors from the marketplace, not allowing others to compete the way they did themselves. And that comes with the cost. And the cost is paid by everyone. It is paid by consumers. 
And they have also seen how media and social media allow stories to travel with the speed of the wind, even though they are false, that they are lies, that they are put there in exactly to manipulate us. And we need to fix that, because the potential of technology is, pretend, is enormous. And what we need, of course, is to give the confidence that we can do this, that we can create a society where technology serves us, where we can live on the planet, and where the market serves us as consumers. So the time is over when we could have one set of rules online and another set of rules offline. Today, when the digital thing is part of everything we do, well, of course, we need to make sure that what we do online is as protected as what we do offline. And that is why the European Commission, my colleagues, myself, we've been working to uh, make the new rules of the digital age. Because this is something that indeed needs European space. This is a thing that we have taken to heart. Because for us, the important point is to make sure that when we get new rules, we do not hold back on innovation. On the contrary, what we want to do is to create the trust that it needs to succeed. This is why we have the new citizen rights to privacy, traveling under the acronym of GDPR. This is, this is in place to make sure that we as citizens stay in control of our data. And this is also why we have proposed rules to allow businesses, millions of businesses, who are completely dependent on platforms to make sure that they are being treated in a fair way. Because so many of small businesses dealing with the platform, they say, we have no idea what is happening, why it's happening, or who to turn to to fix it. And of course, we need every small business to have a fair chance of making it, also when you're depending on platforms. And obviously, as a very important aspect in our democracy, we want terrorist uh, information, terrorist inclination taken down within the hour. And when it comes to competition law enforcement, all of this obviously creates a challenge. New business models, new ways of creating value, new ideas about how scale can be gained. But the thing is that we can use old school principles. Because in that respect, not much is new. When it comes to competition law enforcement and to illegal behavior in the marketplace, well, what we see is a very old school. It's about greed. It's about getting something that you cannot get by competing on the merits. And that, of course, has made it possible for us to keep track on the changes that has happened over the decades. In the case like Microsoft acquiring LinkedIn or Apple's purchase of Shazam, we've looked at how data affects competition, whether a merger gives one company control of data that it will make it impossible for other people to enter that market. And we also make sure that powerful digital businesses don't misuse the power over data to hold back on innovation. Because in the last decade, it's not just technology that changed. The businesses that have become the Internet's giants, well, they have changed too. They're not startups anymore, fighting to find a toehold among big, powerful companies. Well, now they have, are themselves the big beasts. And if they deny a startup a chance to do what they did by carving out a place for themselves in the marketplace to do things differently, well, then we all lose out on the benefits innovation can bring. And this is why we had to make sure that Google, Google couldn't stop rival versions of Android, an open source system, everything we want. 
from competing to offer users a better experience. And that Amazon didn't stop ebook retailers from dealing with others, with getting together with publishers in order, in order to make a better deal for all of us when it comes to ebooks. But when I enforce competition law, and when I talk with my colleagues about how we enforce competition law to make sure that you have a fair marketplace where you can do your business, we also see the challenges. Because they are many. We need to understand how markets are changing. What is a platform economy when it comes to competition? What is the exact role of data when it comes to how biz businesses can thrive? And how to promote innovation in a marketplace because for Europe to stay ahead, innovation is what we need. And this is why I'm seeking advice. Having appointed three special advisors to give advice on exactly these specific issues, data, platforms, innovation, and how should we respond? They will be done by spring next year to give advice, not only for me, but for everyone to discuss. And the thing is exactly to discuss. This, of course, is an amazing place to be. But in a focused way, we will gather 500 people in Brussels in the beginning of next year. From the business side, from the NGO side, economists and lawyers, those who are government officials and students as well, in order to discuss, in order to be able to get it right, to keep the market open for those who innovate. And we will talk about this, but we will not stay in an ivory tower. On the contrary, the discussions will be informed by the many, many uh, contributions that we have had from people all over Europe. Because just to conclude, and I know I'm telling you things yet you know already, it is a new world, and yet still, it's a new world for consumers who find digital technologies wherever they look. It's a new world for regulators working to make sure that they can offer as much protection as at all possible. It's a new world for startups as well. Of course, innovation and ideas is still important. The right ideas, the dedication to put those into practice can still take you all the way to the top. But today, I think it's clearer than ever that the right ideas are the ones that put our fundamental values first. Give these values light. Give them a life. It is clear that there is no such thing as a business model that doesn't respect people's rights. There's no such thing as a great new service that depends on using people's data in a way that they would never knowingly consent to. And there is no such thing as a great business that will make money by avoiding paying taxes or ignoring the rights of workers. The key to success in the future is not just technical brilliance. The key is trust. And for startups, I think that creates an opportunity, something new, another way into the marketplace, an opportunity to leap ahead of the big ones, of the giants who are struggling to figure out how to regain the trust and the confidence that they lost. And this is an opportunity to create new ways to stand up by giving users real, clear, understandable information on how their data will be used. To give you one example, an opportunity to build the next generation of businesses where taking our rights and our values as a reality in the business culture and do that for real. And maybe that's the real innovation challenge today. Of course, the ideas, 
of course, the capital. But the real, real, real challenge is to make sure that innovation give life and shred light on the very basics, what we stand for, so that we will keep living on a planet for humans in markets that serves consumers and in societies that is there for us as citizens. This is a challenge. But being here, wow, I think this is a challenge that you can meet. Thank you.